Hi guys, today we're going to be talking about power banks and we're going to find out what the right size is for you and we're featuring a Jackery Explorer 1000 version 2. Yeah, we thought it was about time that we did a video which might help explain and demystify the world of power banks because there's so many on the market now. There is just literally hundreds of them and you see them all over YouTube all the time and you've got loads of numbers involved. So loads of wattages, loads of capacities, obviously all different shapes and sizes. And we thought it might be useful just to talk about if there's a sweet spot. So is there a good kind of all round size, all round capacity that is useful to have in the van? Because they're not, they're not cheap things. And if you don't spend enough and you have something which is too small, then you might be a bit frustrated. It might not run the things that you want it to run. If you buy one that you spend a lot of money on, it might be too big, it might be too heavy. And then suddenly you've got problems with weight and storage in your van. So let's talk about what all the numbers mean and what the sweet spot could be. And I've got this Jackery here um, as a good kind of, middle of the road size, middle of the road capacity to kind of give you some examples about runtime and things. And we're gonna plug some stuff into this one a little bit later on so you can kind of get a feel for how long things would run for, what it can run, what it can't run as well. Uh, and uh, I'll explain a bit more about this Jackery a bit later on. Right, let's get into it then. So let's talk about power to start with. So when I say power, I'm not talking about battery size or capacity or anything like that. I'm talking about how much oomph one of these is gonna have. So if you're trying to power a kettle, a toaster, a hairdryer, um, you know, you're gonna need a reasonable amount. I'll come on to some numbers in a second. If you're trying to power or recharge a laptop or your phones or those kind of things or a camera and stuff, then obviously that's a slightly different amount because they're probably USB rechargeable. And then obviously that means that you can get away with probably having something which can output a bit less power. So if we do AC first, AC is the mains voltage. So that's on here, you can see it's got three pin plugs. Uh, so that's normal domestic appliances that you'd have in your house. Let's talk about wattage on those. So. If you think about a high power kettle that you'd have in your house, so like an instant boil kettle, uh, one of those ones with the hot plate on the bottom, you know, that kind of thing. Um, those tend to be about 2.2 to 2.5 kilowatts. So really like big, so 2,200 2, watts to 2,500 watts. Um, this jackery here, this supports 1500 watts. Uh, so that gives you an idea. You can get power banks which go up to 2,000, 3,000 watt output. Um, they're a lot bigger physically than this, uh, but it gives you a bit of an idea. Now, if you're camping, you might not want to have one of those rapid ball kettles with you. They can be quite big. You don't necessarily need that. So you might want to have a kettle like this. Here we are. So this kettle here, I think this is about 20 quid off Amazon, something like that. This is a 600 watt kettle. So if you look inside it, it looks very similar. There's no coil or anything. It's all hot plate on the bottom, but it's 600 watts, which means it'll run beautifully on this Jackery. And uh, what we'll do a bit later on, we'll plug it in and we'll just see what kind of runtime we get out of this particular size of battery in this Jackery. So that's a kettle. Toasters, they range. Um, so usually toasters are around the kind of six to 700 watts mark. It does depend how many slots the toaster's got, and I'm talking about a typical two slot toaster, six, 700 watt power, something like that uh, is, is fairly typical. Hair dryers, so another thing that you're gonna use in the van quite a lot. Um, hair dryers tend to range from kind of seven, 800 watts up to kind of 1500 to 2000 watts. Uh, Sarah's got a uh, GHD folding travel hair dryer thing. Let me go and grab it and I'll just have a look at the wattage on that. GHD, travel hairdryer, 1000 on low, 1400 on high. So you can run this at full power using one of these. So 1500 watts power gives you a bit of an idea. On the toaster, bear with me one second, uh, toast at 650. So that gives you a bit of an idea. Um, and uh, yeah, you kind of got a breakfast, you've got ready in the morning. Obviously you could heat yourself. I haven't got a fan heater with me, otherwise I'd show that to you, but it gives you a bit of an idea of the kind of things that you could run. Obviously, if you're gonna plug things like a laptop in to charge, there's two ways to do that. You can either do it with the AC, so the 240 volt, and plug in your normal power adapter. 
Uh, that's going to be whatever the capacity of the power adapter is. So they tend to be 40 to 60 watts, something like that. So we'd have no problem powering that. It's not really the best way to charge a laptop uh, using your power adapter like that because the inverter, which is inside these, does take a bit of power. So best way to do it is to use a USB cable uh, if your laptop can charge with USB. Uh, USB-C is quite powerful. This particular one, that's DC output and the USB-C power from this is 100 watts. So you've got 100 watt charging power coming out of this power bank and it's a much more efficient way to do it rather than having to ramp it up to 240 volts and then take it back down again to put it in your laptop. If you can plug it into USB-C, you're gonna get much more charge out of one of these batteries into your uh, laptop. Um, so that applies for phones and all of the other stuff which you'd have a normal power adapter for. Obviously some laptops and stuff you need a 240 volt so you can obviously plug that straight in. Right, I think we need to see what kind of runtime we're talking about. So that's power, so all of the wattage stuff. What about capacity then? Well, so this particular Jackery here, this is an Explorer uh, 1000 version 2. Um, very nice it is as well. Uh, and this Jackery is uh, a thousand, just double check, uh, 1070 watt hours. So call it a thousand, thousand, thousand watt hours of power in this battery. So that is the capacity of it. And that's quite confusing because it's a lithium battery, uh, a, a LifePo 4 battery. And you quite often when you, talk, when you see vans, you talk about power in the leisure batteries in amp hours. So you might have a 100 amp hour battery or a 92 amp hour battery, or if, you, you know, if you've got uh, something upgraded, it might be 230 amp hours, something like that. And then they talk about these in watt hours, which I find really frustrating. So this particular battery, just for comparison, is 30.4 amp hours excuse me, 30.4 amp hours. So that gives you an idea. <coughs> oh, excuse me. That gives you an idea of um, the comparative capacity of one of these compared to a normal van battery. But I know that doesn't really mean anything to you. So what I think we can do, I'm going to put some water in this kettle. I'm going to get some bread for this toaster and I'm going to plug these in and the battery on the front of it tells us how long it can run those things when they're on. So let's do that, and that'll give you a much, much better idea, won't it, of what a thousand, amp a thousand uh, watt hours or 30.4 amp hours can really deliver you. Let's get some water in it. Okay, right, let's plug this in then. So just like a normal home socket, you plug it in and I've pressed the power button. You can see on the front here, hopefully you can see this on the screen, you've got an input and an output. So input is if you were charging this unit, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Output is how much the power is being drawn from the appliances that you've got inside it. Now you have to turn, so that it's just in standby at the moment with the screen on. If you press and hold the AC button, that turns the inverter on. So the inverter is actually turned on now. And there's a little hours thing here, uh, which tells you how long it can run for. So I'm gonna turn this kettle on. So you can see there I've clicked it on. The power has just ramped up to 638 watts. So you can see that uh, this unit, uh, this kettle, 635 watts is what it's drawing. And it's telling me that this battery with 100% in it will run this for 1.6 hours. Uh, so just over an hour and a half, it could boil a kettle constantly. Uh, so that gives you a bit of an idea. You're gonna boil an awful lot of kettles in an hour and a half. So that gives you an idea for that. I'm just gonna turn that off because I'm gonna grab the, uh, the toaster and just show you that. Okay, toaster's here. Start the toaster. Uh, and surprise, surprise, toaster's about the same. So 646 watts. Uh, and surprise, surprise, it's saying it can run it for 1.6 hours. So it's the same wattage, obviously it can run it for the same time. Now, let's give this jackery a bit of stick. Let's turn the kettle on as well. Uh, now we've had the power jump up here to just under 1300, as you'd expect, and it's saying it can run it for 0.8 of an hour. So just under an hour, and that's exactly what you'd expect because it's basically twice as much as we were putting on it before. So I'll just turn those off and let's give the hairdryer a go. Okay, hairdryer plugged in. 
uh, and obviously 99% of battery left. So I'm gonna put this on low to start with. I'll just hold it out the way so it's not too noisy. So on the screen, that's telling me that is 300 watts. It's actually a lot less than I thought it was. Uh, so yeah, 300 watts and ah, that's because it's only on the fan. So I'll put it on the, so that's on the low heat setting. That's 600 watts, 1.7 hours. Put it on the high heat setting and it's now jumped up to 1300 watts and an hour of runtime. Oh, just dropped down 0.8 of an hour runtime. So that gives you a bit of an idea then of exactly what you can power for one of these from a 240 volt perspective. Now, you've got to ask yourself, when you think about the other considerations of one of these batteries, so physical size, where are you going to store it in the van? Weight, um, because these aren't light things, you know, you, they put a decent sized handle on these with a bit of comfy rubber for a reason. Um, you've got to think, do you really need anything more than that? The problem with having anything less is that they don't tend to run things which are over about six, 700 watts in power. Uh, they tend to be quite limited. So if you wanna run a hairdryer at 1400 watts, 1500 watts, something like that, this is probably about the sweet spot in terms of size. So definitely worth checking out um, this particular one. Uh, we really like this Jackery. It's, uh, it's worked really well for us. We've been away camping with it and stuff. It's been uh, absolutely fantastic. Um, we think this is a really good kind of middle ground and, and sweet spot in terms of power banks. The other thing to consider if you had something bigger than this is how long it takes to charge because obviously, you know, you need to be able to plug these in, you need to be able to charge them up. You can do that through solar and solar panels straight into the side if you wanted to. Um, you can obviously charge it up through uh, mains as well. And, you know, Jackery give you a normal cattle lead to be able to plug this in uh, and charge it up. There's no kind of external power adapter and stuff, which again, if you have something smaller than this, physically um, and capacity wise, sometimes they come with an external power supply, which you have to carry with you if you want to be able to charge it up from the mains, which is again, it's a bit of a pain, whereas everyone's got one of these cables. So that's uh, definitely something worth considering if you're thinking about one of these. So I thought it'd be useful to share with you just the exact dimensions and weight of this particular jackery that we've been using. Uh, so this is 32 centimetres by 22 by 24 um, and it weighs about 10.8 kilos, something like that. So you've got to remember uh, when I talked about weight, um, you know, when you're thinking about payload in your van and, you know, if you're taking this in your car and stuff, that's not really a problem. But if you think about it in your van, just make sure if you're going to go for this, that it's going to be the right kind of weight for you. So I keep talking about Jackery, but you probably wonder why we're um, talking about this particular one. Well, five year warranty. Um, so, you know, it comes with a three year warranty straight out the box. If you register on their website, you get another two years. This has got a Bluetooth app. Uh, you can connect it to Wi-Fi as well uh, if you want to mon monitor it. Um, on that too. Um, Jackery have been around for absolutely ages um, with these. I'm sure most of you have probably heard of Jackery in the past. Um, really decent build quality. It's not metal, um, so it is plastic. However, it's really solidly built. Lovely kind of rubber handle on the top for when you're moving it around. Good and solid. It does fold flat to try and keep the space down as well. It's quite quiet, I have to say. So even when we were running this, um, pretty much flat out at the kind of 1400 watts um, when we were trying the hairdryer and both the kettle and the toaster on and everything there wasn't much noise coming out of this um, and it doesn't make a lot of noise when you charge it either even flat out charging because it charges in an hour uh, if you want it to on kind of its boost mode um, actually it's really quiet when it does that and that's surprising because I've tried loads of other power banks um, reviewed a load of others before and all of that sort of stuff but living with this it's a lot quieter than all of the other ones that we've got, which is a real bonus, you know, because what you don't want if you we got it on charge, uh, might be late in the evening or something, what you don't want is a huge load of fans and loads of noise coming out of it and everything. Honestly, this is really quiet compared to all of the others uh, that we've tested. So there you go then. Hopefully that's been helpful in terms of explaining the different kind of powers of things, 
the different uh, run times that you're likely to get from a certain size of battery. Like I said, we think this is a real sweet spot in the range uh, of all the Jackery products. Uh, do check out the website, uh, link on the screen now in terms of this particular product uh, that we've been trying out uh, and also in the description below. Uh, you can check in there to make sure if there's any current offers or discount codes and all of that kind of stuff. So do check all of that out. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you again soon for some more. Come on, time.